Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel and um, today is going to be a special session because um, a friend of mine, um, well first she was my kids teacher and she is an amazing 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 teacher so I'm very lucky that my kids had her and um, today is a special uh, session because she, uh, Miss Campbell, has asked me to do um, a paint session for her kids. So you guys are really lucky to have an amazing teacher like Miss Campbell. Um, she did tell me that you guys are learning about plants and I thought it would be really fun to do some cherry blossoms because it's, well, it's still cherry blossom season and, you know, not all of us can get out and go to the park to see them. So most of the parks are closed. By the time we do get out, they won't be there anymore. So it'll be fun to paint them. And um, what you're going to need is a sketchbook or any paper. If you don't have a sketchbook, that's fine. If you have a canvas, if you have a canvas board, uh, mixed media paper, any paper that you have works. If you've got watercolor paint or acrylic paint, either of them works. I'm going to be using watercolor paint. You're going to need some paintbrushes, a cup of water, a plate to mix some paint in, Please don't use mom's good plates, okay? Or the really nice plate that grandma brought cookies in, okay? Use any plastic plate or any disposable plate would be fine. And some paper towel, okay? You might want to put some, if you're using acrylic paint especially, you might want to put some old newspaper or maybe um, some old magazine sheets on the table where you're painting just so that you don't make too much of a mess and it's easier to clean up. Um, and that's about it. Uh, all you, the only other thing you need is a really good mood. Okay, so I'm just going to show you uh, the sketchbook I'm using. Okay, this is a mixed media sketchbook and this is what it looks like. Okay, but you guys can use whatever paper you have at home or if you have a different sketchbook, that's fine too. So you can see here, I've already got um, some tape around it and what that does is just give it a nice border. So I just used this regular um, painter's tape that you can get at the dollar shop or any hardware store. Okay, And these are my water paints. Okay, You can use any water paint you have at home or you can use acrylic paint. I've got some round brushes here. Okay, um, I got them from different places at different times. Um, I got this pack, was really good, it's a Crayola pack and it's got like four different sizes and I use this one a lot for like water paint. So you can use whatever you have at home. Uh, the round tip works really nicely for flowers especially and water paint. Okay, so I also have this little spray bottle. If you don't have that, you can just take a drop of water and if you're using water paint, put a couple drops of water on each of the little sections here for the different colors. I'm just going to wet that. Okay. And we are going to start with black. So what I'm going to be using is, I'll show you the colors that I have. So this is what these look like on paper. These are the colors I have, and I'm going to be using black, and I'm going to be using this rose color, it's called quinacridone rose. I'm going to be using some cadmium red, and a little bit of violet, and maybe a little bit of green. Okay, so they don't have to be the exact same shades as this one. I will tell you what color I'm using as I go along, and of course you will be able to see when it comes on the paper what it looks like okay and don't forget you need a cup of water some paper towel and you should be ready to go so taking this thinner brush right now and I'm going to wet that I'm gonna get rid of the excess water on the side of the cup okay I don't want it too drippy and I'm just gonna take a little bit of black okay so there we go what I'm going to do is, on the separate, this is the cover of, for the um, paintbrush for the watercolor set, you can take um, 
a plastic plate. I'm just going to get rid of that extra water and that extra paint there. So when you're using, if, you're, if you guys are using water paint, you don't want to get your paintbrush too wet. You don't want too much paint on your brush. Okay, just a little bit at a time and you can add more as you go because it does get hard to control if it gets too wet. So what we're going to do is, starting at the top, and I'm going to draw a branch down this way, and then we're going to add the cherry blossoms to it. Okay, so very lightly. I'm not going to press down on the paintbrush. Okay, I'm just very gently touching it to my sketchbook. Okay, and I'm just going to start with this little twig. And I'm very gently just pulling down and I'm making them a bit wobbly so they look like branches and twigs. Okay, and add some twigs as you go down. Okay. And maybe I'll go down to about here. Okay, take a little bit more paint and I'm going to make this part a bit wider. And you know what? I think I want it to go right off the page. I'm just going to fill that. So you can see this isn't very... I did take black, but it looks like gray. Okay, so I didn't take a whole lot of paint on the brush. I dampened the brush with water got rid of the extra water okay, so that it's not drippy and I just took a little bit of paint right, from the little black section there and I got rid of the extra on that plate okay, and then I've just created these this branch and these little twigs coming out so I'm going to add a couple more twigs and I'm very gently touching the paper. I'm not pressing down the brush at all. So if you press the brush, what's going to happen is you're going to get a thick line. I'll show you in the corner here. So if you press down, you're going to get a line like that, which is not what you want right now. We want thin branches. Okay, so just taking a little more paint. And over here, I'm just going to add a little bit more dark to one side just so that it looks like I'm going to imagine that the light is falling here somewhere so over here somewhere in this area there's sun so this part of the branch is going to be a bit lighter and this part is going to be a bit darker this is where the sun is not hitting so there's some shadow here okay just to make it look a bit more realistic a bit more 3d okay and I'm going to follow that first gray line I have very closely with this darker line okay, and you can go really slow and all that's doing is making a bit of shade a bit of shadow on this side of the branch I'm going to make it a bit thicker this is really thin on some parts and then as I get to the top it will be thinner towards the end of the branch. Okay. And I'm just going to pull out a couple more branches. And remember to make them wobbly. They're not going to be straight. So just kind of stagger your hand a little bit. Where the branch is joined with the twig, it's going to be a little thicker over here. So you can kind of make this slight triangle shape where it's joined to the rest of the branch. Okay, maybe get some more paint. Maybe one branch over here. With some twigs coming out. Okay, don't forget if you need to pause the video Okay, you can, and then you can start again to see the next step. Okay, so there we've got some branches. I'm just going to rinse out the brush now. 
Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some of that rose color and or red. So you might your paint might say that that color is red. Okay, so any red color you have, you can take that. This is a slightly pinky rose, uh, pinky, pinkish red color. Okay, it's not really dark. It's not really um, a, let's see, what, what color? Okay, it's not really a blood red. It's more pink. Okay, and we are going to put in little cherry blossoms. So cherry blossoms have about five petals. So what we're going to do is you want to think about where you want to put your cherry blossoms. You want them to be spread out all over and around the branches. So okay, so again I'm just taking I wet my paintbrush, remember, got rid of the extra water on the side of the cup, went in and I took a little bit of this rose color or red or pink, whatever you have getting rid of the extra on this plate over here. Okay, and I'm going to draw five petals. And I'm gonna start here. Okay, so one, and they're kind of teardrop tear shaped. Okay, so there's one, two, there's that teardrop, three, four, and five. This one's a bit wonky, don't worry about it. If yours go a bit wonky too, do not worry about it. Okay, and you're just going to fill those in with your paintbrush like that. Okay, easy enough. So you can go ahead and add as many cherry blossoms as you like. I like a lot of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing. And I'm going to spread the cherry blossoms around. Not all of them are going to have twigs, so it's just going to look like they're kind of magically floating around. But that's okay, because it's a painting. You can use your imagination. There are no rules. If it looks good to you, go ahead and do that. If you want to do a different color of cherry blossom, that works too. So go ahead and choose a different color if you like. Do purple ones, do yellow ones, do blue ones. It doesn't matter, as long as it looks good to you. Okay, so that's it for that rose color I used. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush, rinse it out, get rid of all that extra water. I'm going to wipe some of that on the paper towel too. You can see how colorful my paper towel is from all that water paint. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this other red Okay, this is more of an orangey red. And if you don't have another red, that's fine. You can take purple if you want. Okay, and if you don't want to do this step, that's okay too. Okay, so I'm just taking, need a little bit more water. This is the red I have. You can also use purple. I'll do a couple purple just so you can see how it looks. Okay, and don't forget to get rid of a little bit of that extra. And I'm going to go into all the petals. Okay. And I'm just going to draw little lines going up a little of the way from the middle. Okay, Just a couple, like three, two or three. And that's how it's going to look. It just gives it a really nice little texture there. 
If you look at flowers, they've got these little lines and little creases. And their petals have so much texture on them. They've got little crinkles. Okay, so just starting from the middle, I'm just doing one, two, three, like that. One, two, three. Just where that point is in the middle of the flower. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, and you see that look it's giving them? It just gives it more interest. Okay, and I'm going to do a couple with purple just so how you can see so you can see how it looks. So I rinsed out my paintbrush. I'm going to take a little bit of this purple. This is a really dark purple. Okay. And I'm going to get rid of the extra. So you can see where I've done all my previous work and got rid of extra. And this doesn't get wasted. If you do it on a on the cap, on the lid, sorry, of your paint set or if you do it on a little plastic plate that you can let dry and use again, then if that is wasted, you can just use that again by adding a tiny drop of water. Okay, So I'm going to do it with purple, and you can see how that looks. So we're just starting in the middle, right at that point, and just drawing up three short lines. Okay, You don't want to draw it all the way to the end of the flower. Just maybe a little, maybe halfway. One, two, three. 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 Okay? And you can go ahead and do that for all the rest of your petals. For the final touch, just going to rinse out that paintbrush. I'm going to go back and I'm going to take, hmm, I wonder if I should just do, what color should I use? I could use black. Okay, so I'm going to see how that looks. I'm going to take a tiny bit of black on the end of this paintbrush. I'm going to get rid of the extra. I'm just going to use the tiny, the tip of the paintbrush, and I'm just going to put some really tiny dots in the middle part. Okay? And those are, if you look at flowers carefully, they've got these little parts in the middle. Right? There's stamens and there's anthers. Okay? Most of the time they are yellow, and that's color helps attract the bees because it's like pollen, which we want the bees, which the flower wants the bees to spread, right? So it catches onto their little legs, but it's the color and the scent that attracts them. I'm using black just so that it stands out a bit more. And if you want to use some other color, you could also use red. So let's see how red looks. Okay, so I'm just going to rinse that out really well. And take that same red that I used, but this time I'm not going to lighten it with a drop of water. I'm just going to take that red as it is on the tip of my paintbrush. And I'm just going to go in and add those. That looks really cute. So you can add those little dots right in the middle of your flower. I'm going to go over some of the black ones too. I like the red better. And see, sometimes I just do something and I can cover it up so there's no mistakes. If you make a mistake, you can always cover it up. Don't stress about it. Don't worry about it too much. Or you can always make another painting. So I'm just going back and taking the red and covering up all that, those black dots with the red because I like the way the red looks better. And if you like the black, then you can keep it black. That works too. Okay, I'm going to rinse that out. And there's your cherry blossom tree, or branch, sorry, complete. And 
God assign your work. Very, very important. So take your paintbrush and just add your initials. And there you go. I'm going to take this off to see how that looks. The reason that I use this tape, as you can see, is it doesn't tear off the paper. Okay, And you'll have to excuse these few stains. This was from a painting I was doing, and I was using the page in front of it, and I didn't take out or put another page underneath here, so you've got some stains there. So if you take out the page and put it on a flat surface and do it not in your sketchbook, that works. Or if you want to do it in your sketchbook, what you can do is you can take a piece of paper, put it here so that it sticks out a bit, right? And that way when you're painting your this page, the page underneath doesn't get spoiled, okay? So if you paint these, I would love to see them. And I hope you had fun painting. And if you guys ever want to paint anything else, please just let miss campbell no and i would be more than happy to paint it for you guys and have you guys paint along i think that would be so much fun to do